Okay guys, this is that dev and welcome to this video. And in this video, I'm going to set up my Linux operating system for development by adding Python, C Sharp, C++ and source control. First up, Visual Studio Code. So we're going to enter in this command, sudo snap install code and then two lines is classic. And then once that is installed, we have Visual Studio Code and then we can decide all the settings that we can apply to it to change the looks. But I'm going to leave this for later, but you can see all these things for now. You can choose what you want to do. We will install Git later on, but for now we're just going to mark it as done. Okay, so let's start by creating a new file. Okay, but first we're going to install the Python library and then we can start coding in our new file. So now we can say print and hello world as we should always do and then we can run and debug and then there it prints hello world for us and that's how we get Python installed. Now C++. So we're going to start by typing up the command for installing GDP the compiler and this is the command and we let that run. And once it starts installing, we can see here, we just need to say, yes, we let everything else install. And now, while that's installing, we install the C++ extension on VS Code. And we write these commands to open up our first program file. And we're going to create a new file by naming it hello world.cpp. And then we can write some of the code for this hello world.cpp like this and then we're going to say c out um, hello world and hopefully this should run so then I, and I click run and debug just need to say let's build it to the compiler but then I got a few errors and I realized oh I just needed to make sure this launch file was correct set up correctly and I missed a return zero. This was the biggest issue, was putting the return zero. Now when we run it, I get hello world. Okay, so now the C++ work code works and we can test it a little bit more by changing the code up a bit to say, please subscribe. So when I go and run the program, then it says, please subscribe. Now we do C sharp. Here we're going to have to install the SDK for .NET system and we're going to copy and paste these commands basically. And once you have the commands out, I try and enter the commands and I get an error every time when I try doing this and I realized that it has something to do with the .NET version. So I've got it working after some time and when I scrolled all the way back up here you can see I said SDK 7.0 because apparently if I go to the website here it says that only Ubuntu has up to 7.0 available so 8.0 8 is not available on Linux. Okay so now we can install the C Sharp dev kit extension in VS Code and we type out these commands to make our first program folder and once that opens up into VS Code we can trust ourselves and then we type in a new file so we're going to have a text file and we're going to select uh, C sharp as our language and that sets it up okay so I made a mistake we're supposed to start by typing out .NET new console in the terminal and then this creates our program files and everything that we need so this hello world file that I just created I don't need it, I'm going to delete it. And then we have our program file which already has the code in for us and we just say .NET run in our terminal and then it compiles and it says hello world. And we can even test this out a little bit more by saying please subscribe and now you guys know how to set up C Sharp for Linux. Okay, so now we're going to handle source control by installing Git. We're going to install it by typing in the command sudo apt install and then git and that should be it. And now we're going to say yes over here 
and the rest of the install process will go on and we will install github pull requests and issues extension for vs code over here now once we've created a repository we can stage all our changes and create our first commit for the initial repository by saying created first program workspace and that's committed and now we've got our repository set up Okay, so let's say we want to make a change. We can go and create a new branch. Let's call it test branch. And once that's created, we can now start making some changes. So let's say we want to say, uh, we want to make this output over here more descriptive by saying you typed out and then whatever you typed out. So we're going to say you typed and then let's just put a semicolon over here and a space so it just looks nice and now before we can uh, commit it let's go and test it by saying opening up the terminal and saying dot net run and then we get a nice output saying hello world please subscribe and now we can enter something does it work and it works so it says you typed does it work so that means it works okay so now we can go and stage these changes we can look at the changes and write our commit message over here added dot, uh, descriptive output i guess yeah that should work and we can commit all right um i forgot to stage the changes let me just quickly stage them over here so you can see there's no changes that are not staged and we have a change here that is staged okay so now we can commit and there we go we've created our first commit and now our test branch and we can see okay this is our program and now let's say we want to go and merge this to the main branch we go to the main branch and if we go down here here's the test branch and you can see there's a difference so let's go to the main branch and merge the test branch into the main branch. So we're going to go merge branch, test branch, and there we go. We've merged them with no complications or anything. And we have our program set up properly. So let's say we want to publish our branch. So we just say publish branch and we'll start opening GitHub for you. We go to the website and here's our GitHub account open. So we can just authorize this. Yeah, so here's our repository in GitHub, all our programs and so on. And now we want to add a README file. So let's just go and create a branch. Okay, I'm going to name it um, adding a README file. Okay, so create new branch. We can now go and edit this branch by checking our branches so your branch here let's just click on the branch and this is our branch so let's add a readme file here at the bottom just say that this repo is a test for source control with vs code and we can commit the changes and just say adding a readme file Okay, and then we can commit these changes directly to our branch because we created this branch for uh, this change so we don't have to create a new branch and there we've made a commit and the readme file is displayed here at the bottom and we can see we're one commit ahead of the main branch so that means we should now maybe merge this to our main branch so let's go to the main branch and we can create a pull request by com and let it compare for us. So we can see, okay, here's what's the differences. And then we can create the pull request. And we'll see there's, okay, no complications. It handles everything for us. It sees there's no complications. We can now merge this safely. So let's just merge and we can confirm the merge 
and now we have a merged branch so our main branch is up to date now and if we go check it here we have the main branch okay let's first say I lost my file oh no so we can now go to VS code and we can create a clone from the one that's now posted on github so we can clone the repository from github we clone the stop one okay I'm going to put in our folders code folder c sharp select that as the destination and we open it and then here we have our code files all safe and sound with the readme file as well because we added that online so that means everything works properly and we have source control and a backup for our source control on github so here I'm just checking my files you can even go down here and see the timeline and all the stuff for there so you can see all the commits that's happened even online okay guys thank you for watching the video up until the end here you may have noticed that I haven't uploaded a video in a while and it just took me a long time to edit this video actually I recorded it a while ago but I just didn't have the time because of university and stuff I'm actually studying computer science right now but hopefully I'll be able to release a few more dev design videos and stuff like that and just subscribe and I'll get some more content out later on the year.